Hello, hello, and welcome to this week's episode of Grow Wealthy Grooming. I am your host, River Lee. Thank you guys so much for being here and for your patience. I sincerely apologize. I feel like I say that a lot, so I apologize about that too. Uh, Not gonna lie, not feeling my best today. And I was trying to work with everything for tech. And tech just doesn't love me. Hey, Erin, great to see you live too. I love when you guys are here. Hey, Ruth, great to see you. So if you guys are brand new here, Grow Wealthy Grooming is where we talk about topics in the pet grooming industry, whether that's about personal growth or business growth. Um, And I am the founder of The Savvy Groomer, where we teach you how to go from being burnt out, broke and broken to healthy, wealthy and happy, building a grooming business on your terms. Hey, Susan, great to see you. And Anne, wow, I'm getting everybody today. I'm excited, good to see everybody. So I am going to do my very best to, oh, and Jennifer, hey, Jennifer. Um, I'm gonna do my best to explain what the topic is today. Uh, I know a couple of people were confused and that's okay. Today's topic is, are brick and mortar grooming salons profitable? Now, the answer is yes, but just the same as everything, right? You know, are mobiles uh, profitable? Yes, but, and Candace, hey, Candace. So the question is, are brick and mortars profitable? Um, And this is a unique time that, you know, there's no straight answer here, right? But I'm gonna give you a really quick rundown because I went through this on a virtual coffee and I thought it was so important to go through this. Hey, Candace, hey, Megan, hey, Jamie, great to see you guys. So if you're not really sure what a brick and mortar is, it refers to a traditional uh, street side business that offers products and services to customers face to face. Um, So think about like in a, you know, whether that is in a strip mall or in a standalone building that is not your house. So generally we talk about grooming, we have uh, what a house call where you go into other people's homes, in home salons where people come into your home, whether it's a side building or on your property. We have brick and mortars, which are shops that are, you know, out in the world, commercial leases. Um, And then there is mobile. So I'm sure there are, you know, then we have other variations of that. But as far as where the grooming happens, those are the general options. So with brick and mortar, are they profitable? It really comes to, um, you know, what your numbers are and the market, right? So I'm going to try really hard to see if I can. Sorry. <coughs> Sorry, I'm not feeling great. Um, let me do this. This might be it. Hmm. Sorry, I got to remember which one is the background. I knew it is one of these. Display. Aha, here we go. I got to figure out how to move this in a way. that we can see everything. Don't mind me. And this is, and I'm not saying every grooming salon. I wanna just look at the generalized profitability of grooming salons in general. Kana and Paul Spa is saying, I'm three years doing pretty great now. Little Town Mobile is hard since cheap. Awesome. Yeah, I, you know, sometimes people are just not feeling great. I'm not, there's no COVID, there's none of that. It's just literally, I just don't feel awesome. Um, I think I just pushed myself a little too hard. We've all done that. Um, You know, that and like changing to a southern atmosphere. I feel like the allergies are different. So I don't know if it's allergies or from maybe a little under the weather. We'll find out. Anyway, um, really quickly, I'm going to just pull this up. Great, we can see it here. So I want to just look at... And we talk about this a lot in my Price Increase Masterclass. If you guys are watching this and have have been in the Price Increase Masterclass or are currently, this is something we need to talk about. So let's say this person has three groomers, right? And let's say we're gonna pay them hourly. um, And you're like, okay, I'm gonna pay them $30 an hour. And if some of you guys are wondering why would we pay them $30 an hour, let's look at a livable wage. Let's say you live in, Oh, I know, um, we looked up, you know, I'm gonna use somebody here. Oh God, I forget the name of their, their place in Washington. Candace, what's the name of the place that you live in Washington? That was a really great example. 
Um, we're gonna find out what a livable hourly wage is, right? How many hours per week? So that's how much we're gonna pay them per week, right? So let's say each person is gonna do six dogs, right? Now, for those of you guys that are like, well, you know, I expect my groomers to be doing, um, you know, 10 dogs a day or eight dogs a day. Realistically, the industry is moving towards a five to six per groomer per day method. They just are. And the reason why they're doing that is because groomers are getting burnt out, they're getting tired, and they want a better quality of life. Unless if you were a power groomer, you were doing between five and eight dogs a day. So let's go ahead and put days per week. And we're gonna copy this and place it here. And we're gonna say that, we're gonna call this instead, I'm gonna copy this real quick. Now I put this at 75 for this person, but let's say you're gonna be doing 50 bucks per dog. Okay, so you've got three groomers here. They're all grooming six dogs per day, five days a week, 30 dogs per week, 50 bucks a dog. That means that they're grossing $1,500 a week. But if I look at how much, and I gotta add this real quick. No, I'm just gonna be lazy. I'm just gonna add things. Boop. So that means that I'm gonna pay them $3,600 a week, but I'm only gonna make $4,500 a week. That's a problem, okay? This is a problem here because what's gonna happen is if I add in, let's say, I'm gonna move these, these two down, make sure I can still see it in my thing. So let's say I'm like, well, I need a receptionist now and I need a bather. We're gonna actually trade these out. I'm gonna move this, I'm gonna put a bather here because I need somebody in training, right? I need a bather in training who's gonna be able to, you know, be trained up to become a groomer because right now there's three ways to get groomers. One is to get someone right out of school and then mentor them to get better train someone from the ground up as a bather. And then the third way is to steal them from somebody else or coax them away with somebody else. So let's look at our bather. Let's say our bather, we're gonna pay them 15 bucks an hour and they're gonna work 40 hours a week, right? And I'm gonna steal this, whoop, don't mind me. Copy, paste, so it'll do the math for us. So they're gonna earn 600 bucks a week. Now for certain areas, $600 a week is a livable wage, but in a lot of places it's really not. So we know this bather is probably not going to work for us forever unless if we can get them up to groomer level. So while they're learning, right, who is gonna teach them? Well, let's say I'm gonna, I'm gonna make this a manager now instead of a groomer. Cause this groomer, I need her to manage, right? So she's still gonna get, she's gonna get more now. She's gonna get $35 an hour. And now she's only gonna groom three dogs a day because she's gonna be teaching the bather, right? So the bather, let's say the bather's still gonna bathe five dogs because let's be honest, if she can bathe five dogs and do three groom dogs a day with our manager here, that's pretty good, right? And so I'm just gonna steal this stuff so we can just be lazy. Boop. So she's gonna work five days a week. Um, she's gonna do 25 dogs per week. Um, let's say it's a bath dog. So we're saying that she's gonna be doing labs too. And we're gonna add her in to the mix. So now how much is this person gonna cost us? Well, now we're not making a lot of profit. So hopefully the manager here is also keeping an eye on the qualities of grooms here and our bather well, now they don't have time to check in and out dogs, right? And a lot of you guys are like, oh, well, my groomers check in and out dogs. Well, if you know anything about what I say, and again, it's just my opinion, guys. You can take my opinion or not take my opinion. Either way is fine. I don't want, and I want you to see my face when I say this. Hang on. Whoop, don't mind me. As I like try to find where, like, where's the camera? So... 
So you can listen to me or not listen to me. I'm always going to give you my best advice, what I notice and things. If people don't, people of course come to me when they want to grow and they want things to be great, but they also come to me when things are going bad. When things are going bad, we also talk. So I never, ever, 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 ever suggest your groomers checking in and out your clients. Why? Because I want the clients to make a relationship with me or my receptions. I want them to make a relationship with my business, not with the groomer. Because then when the groomer leaves, they're going to take my customers with them, right? So you hear a groomer say all the time, well, my customers. Well, the business owns the customers. It's a big misconception. It creates a lot of problems. So your groomer should never be checking in and out your dogs. Now, obviously, if you're mobile, they're going to be doing that. However, that's where you need techniques and things in place that you are building a relationship with that client versus your groomer. So let's go back to these numbers, right? So, you know, now you're like, okay, well, before I hire another receptionist, I'm going to add another groomer, right? So we're going to go ahead and add another groomer. I'm going to have to move this first, actually. Sorry, guys. Boop. I know you're watching me copy and paste stuff. So we're going to add a third groomer. Where this groomer is going to come from, we don't really know. But this groomer is going to make 30 bucks an hour. She's going to groom six dogs. We're going to add all that in. Poof, now we're feeling better, right? Now we're making more money. Now, this is where we're not making any money. But if we can raise these prices even up to $75, I bet there's probably still a 50 bucks for a lab. But are we at our 30% that we're supposed to be for payroll? So here's the thing. Oh, nope, wrong number. Wrong number. Don't mind me. La, la, la. Dyslexic. It happens. No, don't guess what I'm going to do, computer. So our payroll to stay at 30% gross should be $2,700. And we're basically double that. We are more than 50% here, right? Which is crazy. Now we have three groomers, a bather in training, and a receptionist, right? So we need a receptionist. I'm sorry, we have three groomers, a manager, a bather in training, so we need a receptionist. So we're gonna pay her also 15 bucks an hour, right? But she's not actually gonna be doing any dogs. So she's actually gonna cost us, she's gonna bring us in zero. Right, and so we're gonna add her payroll here. Boop. So now our payroll is getting out of control. So um, Seattle's a great one, Candace. So let's say livable wage Seattle. Thankfully, MIT is awesome. It's going to give us the county, but it's going to give us a general idea. So we're going to click on this. And we're not going to do zero children because I don't want my groomer to get pregnant and then have to leave me. But just so you're aware, someone who lives with their parents needs to make at least 20 bucks an hour, which is really important when we're looking at our bather and our receptionist. Because I don't wanna have to train a new person every six months, every three to six months, because they can't afford to live, right? They can't even afford to pay for the gas to get to and from my shop, um, right? And this receptionist really has to have a good personality if she's gonna be in, you know, checking in and out all my dogs, etc. But for my groomers here, this is not even a livable wage. You know, so let's say they're a single mom. They have to make $37 an hour. You know, and some of you guys are like, well, hopefully, you know, she has a husband right here, right? I, you probably can't see it. Hang on, let me move this. Figure out how to. Mm -hmm. There we go. So you can see 37 here. If they're a single mom. Or um, if they are two working adults, right? Right here. I don't know if you can see that. Let me push it over more. 
There we go. So two working adults. They can make 20 bucks an hour. So if they have a husband who works long hours as well, they can afford one kid. But I'm going to assume because there is such an amount of single moms in the grooming industry, she's realistically going to be here. Maybe even here, right? And that's, that's really high. So if I go back here, right? Hopefully you guys can see. I got to move it back so you can see it all. Yep. So then I might, my, my manager comes to me and she says, listen, livable wage here is like, you know, I need at least $37, but to be comfortable and, and work for you for the rest of my life, you know, I would need to be able to do 46, right? So let's do that. Let's add her to 46. Now you're not making any money. So Candace is saying extra things like boarding and or daycare. Absolutely. But don't forget, if I have boarding, and I, I want you to see my face for this. Hang on. Come look at my face. Ta-da. So, yes, daycare and boarding will make you more money. But most of the people that come to Savvy Groomer, most of the people that are following me with me, we don't have over a million dollars to go through um go through all of that like to create a professional boarding and daycare facility you will need about a million dollars because if you're gonna house i mean how many dogs you're gonna house let's say you're gonna house uh 30. it's not a lot of dogs let's go back to our capture right so i'm gonna add daycare so i'm gonna move these down I'm gonna add two daycare attendants, right? And they're both, because I don't wanna have to hire new people all the freaking time, $25 a piece. Uh, hopefully this will calculate the math as well for me. Perfect, so they're, here's the thing, they only make $1,000 a week and the average, when we look at this place, the rent, let's find the rent. You've got childcare, it doesn't, oh, housing. The average housing is minimally $25,000 a year. If they are earning $40,000 a year, that means more than half of their money is just going to their housing, right? So they're gonna each watch 15 dogs a day. Um, let's do this, pardon me. I know it's gonna be messed up math, so just give me one second and I will fix it. So they're gonna do five dogs, uh, dogs per week. And we're gonna say $25 a dog for daycare. So it cost me a th a $1,000 for this person to watch 15 dogs and keep them from killing each other. And I'm gonna earn $18.75. Let's add a uh, boarding. I'm gonna have one boarding person. And we're gonna say they make about the same, right? And so let's say, they're actually gonna be able to do 30 kennels in one day, right? Um, and we're gonna say $25. Now this person is making me good money, but is this, this is barely over my 30%, right? Because what is 30% of this, right? So they're just barely making me over 30%. Uh, you know, it does depend. Like daycare, it wildly depends because if this is a small daycare, gr daycare changes everywhere. I've seen it as low as $10 a day and as high as like 35. But let's, let's for shits and giggles, do 35 for each thing. Right now, this person here, you're like, wow, look at all that money. But how much money did it cost me to create 30 boarding kennels. And also if this person is working, right? If this person is working eight hours a day, right? Then how much time are they really spending with each pet, right? That is, and my math is terrible, so I'm gonna pull up my calculator. Oh, actually I can just do it this way, real easy. See, this is why I love Excel files. So we're gonna divide this by eight hours. So they have about four minutes per dog 
if they are boarding 30 dogs, they have about four minutes. No. Hang on. Divided by eight hours is three. Yeah, so they have to. I'm sorry. So I apologize. So they have about four dogs an hour to take care of. So about 15 minutes per dog in this boarding facility. So that's literally scoop the poop, feed the dog. This is not play with the dogs. This is not have fun with the dogs. Now, with daycare, this is better. But this is still not 30%, right? I don't know if you can see that. Let me move over here. So let's look at this times 30%. Whoop. So they're still over 30%. And this is not a livable wage. And 15 dogs running around playing with each other is a lot of dogs. I used to manage doggy daycare. That's a lot of dogs. Most groups should be seven to 10, especially in a recess model, right? But we're talking about 15 here. So this person had better be freaking good at their job. Oh, and let's say he calls out for the day. Who's watching those dogs? Are we pulling the bather? Are we pulling the receptionist? Is the manager going to be on the floor? Because we definitely can't have this other person watching 30 dogs. Even at $35, we, we don't hit even till probably about $40, $45. Yeah, so we'd have to be $40 for daycare for at $25 an hour for this person to be at 30%. And that's assuming we have 15 dogs. If we have 10, right, which is a safer number for somebody who is not fully, very skilled, trained in taking care of a pack of dogs. Because a pack of dogs is very dangerous, you know. And I, I say that very lovingly. So we've got 40 dogs, right? Um, sorry, so 10, five days a week. Um, so where do we get to? Yeah, I'm just going to keep hitting numbers till we hit it. So I would need to charge $60 a day at 10 dogs a day to keep my payroll at 30% for my daycare. So as we're adding things, the numbers still don't make sense, guys. And I'm, I'm not saying that it won't ever, but it has to be such high quantity. And most of you guys are not quantity people. Like the people that follow Savvy Groomer don't want a 120 dog daycare facility, right? They don't want that. And even then, this is literally someone taking care of a dog for 15 minutes. That is literally spray out the poop, pat pat on the head, you've got food, you've got water, you're not dead. All right, so if we did it more where the dogs have playtime and everything, now you're not making any money. And that's the problem is that most of you guys are heart conscious. Most of the people that come to my site are con like they want to do what's best for the pets and it's figuring out the in between between making money and making business sense and that's where you see all these not i don't say terrible but you see all these corporations doing these things because they will always do a balance between what's best for the pet and best for business and most of the time if it's the pets or business they're going to choose business first you know, and that's okay because that's them, not me. And for most of you guys, it just doesn't make sense. Now you can add retail, of course, but you're hoping you're gonna be making enough money. And the biggest problem is that rates for like the livable wage is skyrocketing. The livable wage is skyrocketing. The rents are skyrocketing. If we just look um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to look. I probably can't look, but let's just look quick in Zillow of what in this area. Let's look at Gig Harbor because that's uh, in ex exactly the kind of place that's like that where places are skyrocketing and a lot of places are like that. Oh, Deborah's saying it's so frustrating because the problem simply is that prices across the board are still not high enough and we have done ourselves such a disservice by not constantly raising over a year. Absolutely. It is way easier to increase $5 a year than it is 20 and the price increase masterclass, guys, the, I've had people have to increase their prices by $100 per pet. 
Um, that person ended up doing one-on-one -on -one coaching as well because it had to be done very strategically. But you can't just increase. There has to be strategy behind it. And I wish it wasn't that much of a pain in the butt, but it is. So let me see if I can, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to have you guys see it. Um, so whoop, you can't see it cause I'm not there yet. Boop. So we're gonna say uh, two bedrooms, one bath, and we're not gonna, yeah, let's do actually a family home. So family home, three bed, one bath. Um, we're gonna do just houses, maybe a townhouse, but not an apartment and not that. So let's go by lowest to highest. So this is, let's see if it'll come up. Okay, so this is nothing fancy. This is like a ranch, just a nothing fancy ranch. So let's see if we can see. So right now it's going for $400,000, which is pretty cheap, right, for the area. So let's look at the home value. So back in, what is that? Oh, I don't know if you can see that. Nope, let me go up. So you can see here in 2012, I'll read it off because I know you guys can't see it. This house was worth about $195,000. So this house has gone from about 195, it's dipped down to like 170. Then it went all the way up, let me see, to about 488,000. And now we're at 400,000. So in less than 10 years, this house has gone up in value $200,000. Look at my face, $200,000. And we are worried about 50 fucking dollars. What is wrong with us, right? What is wrong with us as an industry? This house, $200,000. And it's not even a nice house. Like, I mean, I'm not saying it's a bad house, but this is not like, oh my God, like this is amazing, right? I mean, let's go find something cuter. Okay, this house been on sale two days on Zillow. I know, and I am sorry, I'm like, I'm a little like pumped. So this house, 530. Um, and you can't really see it, but it's like super, it's cute. It's kind of cabiny, not my, not my taste, but so yeah, this house was, uh, $229,000 10 years ago. Let's do our math. 229,000. I'm going to 200, 300, 400, 500. This house has gone up $300,000. $300,000, $300,000 in 10 years. That is literally more than doubled. And when I sometimes suggest that people literally double or triple their grooming prices, they act like people can't afford it. People can afford a house that three years, I'm sorry, 10 years ago was worth $300,000 less. And that is shelter, right? That is not a pet you went out and you purchased for fun. Like pets are of course a part of our lives and we love them, but they are a luxury. You do not accidentally get pregnant with a pet. There are very few places right now that have not skyrocketed. Most places that we are dealing with, most of us here have gone up. I don't, I would love to see somebody who is in an area that has actually lost. Like they're like, oh no, actually where I live, um, our houses have depreciated significantly. Even if you live in the middle of nowhere, the amount of money has gone up, right? I mean, it's crazy. It's just absolutely out of control. So with that, I'm gonna go back to you. Yes, really quick, because I gotta hop into my price increase masterclass. This is why a lot of you guys are struggling, right? So you're like, I'm gonna pay this groomer 15 bucks an hour. I'm gonna pay, I'm not gonna have a manager, right? We're not gonna have a manager. Um, my bather is gonna make minimum wage, which say is eight bucks. I'm not gonna have a receptionist, right? Uh, and then I'm gonna pay this groomer 15 bucks too, right? And, I, and let's say we get rid of daycare too. We're gonna just cut these guys out of here. Right? Except what groomer is going to work for you for peanuts when they can go out and buy their own shop. They can go out and buy their own mobile. They can go, everyone has, there's been so many people who have been illegally working from home. 
if their options are working for working hard, right? Working eight hour days, five days a week, not giving up weekends, right? We're not gonna, you know, we're gonna have to work on weekends. We're gonna have to work till the dog is done. We're gonna have to give up holidays. You know, instead of me relaxing on Christmas Eve, I'm probably working at the shop, right? I have to do all that. And then you're like, well, I'm just gonna pay them 50%, except guess what? You can't, you can't afford to do that either. You have to try to keep your payroll under 30% because you're not also taking into fact that the commercial spaces that you guys are interested in leasing, if the housing market went up $200,000, $300,000 a house, what do you think happened to all those commercial spaces? And you have to understand that there's two options for leases, a regular commercial lease, where they pay the water, the sewer, sewer's kind of always in, eh, and then the taxes. But if you are paying the taxes, the taxes can be astronomical. You know, the taxes could be ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars on top of your rent. Alternatively, if you're in a lease and your lease comes up, and the taxes, if they went from being worth a hundred thousand to being worth five hundred thousand dollars, the taxes are going to go up. And this is the problem we're having. We don't know if the market's gonna crash and you're gonna be overpaying for rent in a space, right? Or, you know, and by the way, overpaying for a space that you're renting, and let's say your landlord says, I'm so deep underwater, I'm just gonna walk away. Now you're renting in a place that's gonna be foreclosed upon. And guess what? You can't stay in a commercial place that's being foreclosed upon. The new bank, the new owner may be willing to rent to you, but most people probably won't, right? So they have that potential. Or you might sign a three-year lease, pay $25,000, $45,000 into this space. And then they're like, I'm so sorry. I was renting you for $2,500. Everything went up. And now it's $5,000 a month. Do you want to leave? Or do you want to stay? And do you want to gut everything out of there so you didn't just build a grooming salon for somebody else and then go start all over again? We are in an unprecedented time where everything is going up, housing has gone up, and by the way, that's not even rents, right? Because my groomer needs to be able to live. And most rents in most places is between $1,200 to $2,500 for a one to two bedroom house. Not even a house, an apartment. And groomers are tired of being a rat on a wheel where they just never get ahead. They do not want to work for you to break even. And you don't want to hire them to break even. So something's got to change. This whole format doesn't work unless if you are huge, unless if you're doing a lot of quantity, unless if you have groomers doing 10 dogs a day, unless if you have a very tight, 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 tight. Like I made a lot of money having my shop. You know why? Because we had five employees and we groomed, for, well, we groomed and bathed 40 pets a day. That is a lot of pets and it's a really tough, if you don't want that lifestyle, most of us don't want to be in a shop with 40 dogs and some of us do, right? But the giant business models is kind of like the Sears, the JC Penney's, these big department stores are going out and we should pay attention to things like that happening, right? These big chain who thought they could fail, failed. Why? Because People will pay more for customized services. And most of us want to give that to them. We want to assess your pet as an individual. We want to have a small client list. We want people that come back regularly. We don't want to be Walmart. We want to be, you know, this beautiful tiny boutique. So it's not that you can't make money. It's not. It's just you either need to do a lot of pets or you have to charge a lot of money. And the other thing I will point out, and again, this is not a mobile versus shop thing, but in this scenario, if these two groomers have had enough and they're tired of working for peanuts and they leave, this business isn't making any money, right? These two groomers are like, my boss is a jerk and we're making peanuts and we can't live. We're gonna go open our own shop. Now this shop is probably not even breaking even. Now this shop is losing money. 
And so the groomer owner is going to have to probably work, you know, and groom all their dogs because they can't afford. So now this groomer owner, right? So now let's get rid of these. Now this groomer owner is going to groom 18 pets a day, right? And this bather who was learning to train is now having to bathe all these dogs and not learn how to groom. And they feel like a rat in a wheel and they're really sick and tired of it. So then they quit. They're like, I'm going to go with these guys because these guys promised to teach me. And little do they know that that's not going to last forever either because it's a cycle. It's a cycle of suck, guys. It keeps happening over and over and over again. And we have to break the wheel, right? We have to stop this. It's got to end. Uh, I do not have enough time today, Candace. I have to hop into Price Increase Masterclass. Um... But, and that depends too, to show you how to make money, it, I would have to look on it case by case. Like, what does that groomer want to do? Do they want to have five or 10 groomers, right? Do they want to have daycare? Do they want to have this? And where are they living? Um, but it would, in order to have this business model work, you would need to have a large facility or you would need to charge boutique prices without being boutique-y. So, and that's, that's everyone's choice. You can charge whatever you want. I'm happy to teach you how to charge more. I'm happy to teach you how to charge where people are very happy to pay your prices. Um, there are very few people who go through my price increase masterclasses that get any pushback on their pricing. Now, some people are like, my people do too. Like I just up my prices, $10. No one said anything. I'm like, no, no, no. We increase our prices by like $40, $60 a dog. Sometimes in our doodle range, like $200 a dog. And people still do it. So there's a method and there's a way to understand. Um, I'm not sure, Candace, if you've been through the Price Increase Masterclass, but you can use the same method we learned on how to make your business profitable using all of that. Um, I'm pretty sure you have. I'm feeling very, I, like I said, I don't feel great today, guys. So I apologize. My brain is not, I feel like you have. I'm like, I feel like, I feel like, yeah. I don't know anymore, my friends. I don't know. Not feeling awesome. But that said, and again, I hope it doesn't come off doom and gloom. That is why brick and mortars are, but may not be profitable. And we didn't even go into overhead and all of those things. But I want you to consider just looking at payroll, how it's really high in order to do this. And it's really hard if people call out. And it puts a lot of pressure on the business owner. And I loved having my shop, but I also had a membership and I also had a lot of things in place to protect me. And it still, for me, didn't offer me the freedom and flexibility that I wanted in my personal life. So if you guys are interested in learning more about me, I highly suggest you hop into my free Facebook group, Savvy Pet Professionals. We talk about personal finance, business, and lifestyle. Um, it is not currently open. But the Price Increase Masterclass, if you guys are interested in it, you can go to SavvyGroomer.com slash Price Increase, where you can hop onto the wait list. Um, we are trying to, I'm trying to figure out how to do it. So it's a self-study. So you guys that want to start now can start now before the first of the year. I don't know. We're not going to definitely do another one this year. Um, I don't know if we're going to launch another one in January. So if you're interested in the self-study, I would just hop on it. We're, we have a bunch of other projects that we're working on currently. But I do need to go because I need to hop into that Price Increase Masterclass so people can get on to the Zoom call. Um, and I love answering their questions from the week. All right, guys, thank you so much for being here with me. I really appreciate you. And I hope this was helpful. If you're wondering why am I not making enough money, this may be part of it, right? And that's where in the Price Increase Masterclass, we teach you how to break this down in a better way and how to move forward, right? And that format works no matter if you are a solopreneur, whether you grow, whether you add more services. All right, guys, I will see you next week. Happy grooming.